Hello again, and it's time for another project. Today, we're going to do some scroll saw work on this grumpy cartoon character. The idea today is simply going to cut out all the white sections, just leaving that very thin black border, and then we'll cut out all the surrounding areas. So it's going to be quite a delicate procedure. Once we've cut it all out, we are going to stick it down onto this thicker bit of plywood, and then we'll inlay it all with a resin, hopefully. You can use paint if resin is not your thing. So for the actual character himself, it will be three mil plywood, I'm going to call this. This is actually the backer of a recycled wardrobe or the drawers that you pull out. This is what we find on the bottom of the drawers. So it was all three wood. And then for the backer, it will be 5.5 millimeter plywood of the similar thing. And the idea is we'll cut round it all afterwards once we've stuck our original piece on there, remember, which is going to be cut out on this piece. So for sticking down purposes, normally I would use carbon paper and trace. There's just quite a lot going on here. So it will be a simple case of getting your three millimeter plywood. We'll line it all with painter's tape. That just peels off easier. And then we'll spray some glue on top of that. And then if we just stick our template down like so, so it's nicely stuck down. And then we'll drill what they call pilot holes into every one of these sections. Remember, we're hopefully going to cut all that out and leave that little thin black line. So, like I say, it's a little bit delicate. So to feed your blades through, no matter what blade you like to use, I will be using a pegless spiral blade today. They can cut them round in any direction. You can get pinless blades ideal for this project because they are small there's no pins in the way and when we get into the smaller sections like the eyes and inside the buckle on the belt they'll go in no problem and even with this one they get pin blades you get pins at both both ends you might just get away with this one i can't see any you might you'll just squeeze that in there i would have thought and into the eyes but for delicate you want pinless or for me spiral blades pegas number five unfortunately with my trapper saw I have to use these adapter clamps. I don't know if you can see that there. The teeth are spiralled all the way around. So they're all cut in any direction. Whereas these two blades, if you want the teeth facing towards you, they want to feel smooth on the way down and rough on the way up. That way you got you know you've got your blades in the right way. So we'll pop this on the scroll saw. We'll tape it all down first, drill our holes. And once it's all nicely cut out, we'll talk about sticking it down onto this one. Cutting around it so we get basically the same shape with a little border. There'll be a little lip all the way around, hopefully. We'll show you how to do that with a little washer and a pencil later on. And then we'll go and find some resin and fill it all in. Okay, nothing too complicated. Well, I say nothing too complicated. Just nice little fun projects. Okay, let's start getting this one ready. Right, you can see from that, we put our blue tape on, painter's tape, we sprayed on a bit of glue there, we stuck the template down, and then we drilled all our pilot holes with just a Dremel, with an engraving bit on the end that went through there easy enough. Remember, it's only three mil thick, so that's popped through there. And with all our little holes at the back, you just about to see that, we sanded them down, now we're good to go. So there are little pilot holes, so we'll use every one of those to feed the blade through. So obviously on mine, unfortunately I have to use these adapter clamps, as I said before. I will feed the blade through, pop on my adapter, and then we'll pop that on the saw. And we'll cut out all the inner sections first. Don't be tempted to cut it all out. You want more, you can hold on to the better. Do all your smaller bits, and then hopefully we'll feed out and feed out. And all these little black lines should hopefully still be in place when we're finished. And once we've cleared all the intersections, we'll hold our breath and then basically go around the whole lot. So we're just left with the black lines. 
and like I say, we'll pop it on to a backer. Okay, let's pop this on the scroll saw, peg of number five spiral blade for me, and we'll start cutting this one out. Right, you can see from that, it's all cutting out nicely, so far, so good. A couple of things I didn't mention before. If you notice, like on the feet, and I do believe up in the face up here somewhere, if I can just, up here anyway, I can't get it now because the blade's in the way. You'll see what we've got, what they call floaters, yes? Because they are basically just floating around, they're not attached to anything. So when you look at your scroll saw patterns, I've modified these slightly so the eyes were connected up to the the nose just so things aren't so loose but a couple of these on the feet and obviously there's one on that one as well they're floating about so what we do we'll leave those and i'll just literally cut those out afterwards they're so small you could probably even leave them off this project and you wouldn't know but we'll see how we get on we'll cut that little piece out separately and then when we come to put the resin in we'll obviously put our resin in we'll take that little section there and just drop that in and set it into the resin just little things to look out. And another one I, I like to do with these spiral blades. You might notice there that it's not quite where you want to be. And I'm not a scroller by any stretch. I'm more of a router kind of guy. But if you're not quite where you are, good thing about these spiral blades, you can go back and forwards like that. I won't turn the machine on because of the noise. But, and you can just nibble at that gently. And maybe around there, that little section there, you can just go back and forwards and just nibble away and just... Get it right up to the line where you need it. There's some delicate areas on here you can see. These little sections there. I'm surprised they're still hanging on. But so far so good. So we'll continue and cut the rest of this out. Right, you can see from that we've made it all the way around the adder cuts, I'm going to call those. A little bit delicate areas, and I'm really surprised we haven't lost anything off. I mean, these are just wobbling away. But once we get our resin around those, they'll be nice and secure. Now, on scroll saw projects like this, you have a couple of options. Obviously, you could just leave it on that piece of wood, peel off your tape. And put it onto a backer so you've got the basically the shape that you would see there like so or we can cut it out which we're going to do today i want to cut out all this surround so it's really just left with the basic black lines now another option would be 
to glue that to your backing board and cut out both boards at the same time. So once you've cut out that, that shape will be identical to the one you've cut out of the back and you can stick it down like so and put in your resin or put your paint on the back or whatever you want to do for coloration. Now for me, for today, just to be a little bit different, I want to put a border all the way around this. So we're going to need to cut out our template first. So it's going to be a bit fragile. And then we'll literally place it onto this backer board. This is a 5mm, 5.5mm one. And then we're going to go round it with a washer. I'll just find a little washer for now. Just give me two seconds. Here we go. Basically, once it's all cut out, we'll get a washer and we'll put one like that and literally get a pencil and you can trace all the way around that with that little washer. <coughs> Excuse me. You will see better once we've cut it out, but the idea is to go like so and we'll follow that round. Obviously, we're going to be resting against the cutout area and as you go all the way around like so, you will find basically you'll get a lovely border. You'll see in a minute because I will show you on the video. I'm just trying to talk ahead of things. So you will see something like that. So if you imagine this white section now, that will be our backer board and all this will be removed. We'll cut this out, pop it on there, do exactly the same thing I've just done with the washer and you'll get a better idea. So let's cut this one out first. Right, we managed to make it all the way round without anything breaking off, which surprised me, to be honest. It's only three millimetres thin, is this uh, recycled bit of plywood. So it's a little bit delicate, but somehow we've managed to make it all the way round. So you can see what we've got going down now. So now we're going to go back to our original backing board. It's what we're going to stick it all down to. So like I said before, there's our little project, just sits on there nicely. Now, like I did say, you could cut that out the same size and have that as your backer. Obviously you would do a, cut the both pieces out at the same time so you have a nice fit. But I do want a little board around this one. So, as mentioned before, I just grabbed a little washer. This one comes off the end of one of the sanding drums here. On your Dremel sanding drum, I just removed the little washer off the end. I've been known to go around sellotape before on bigger projects. Just find something here. You can get away putting a bit of tape in there like so. And just get your pencil in there, depending on how big you want your surround. But I just want a little border, just enough. So whatever that distance is between that hole and there, we'll go for four millimetres. That's the gap I want to go all the way around. Now you can literally just hold this down, make sure it doesn't move. Make sure your washer doesn't disappear under your cutout. Or if you're not too sure, a little bit of tape just to secure it into place somewhere. And just be careful when you take this off. That will just hold it in place. And a little bit there, up there somewhere maybe, if needed. Personally myself, I just tend to hold it down. So we'll go around this quickly now uh, with our pencil. I can just show you with the camera not being in the way. Like so. And we'll just feed this all the way around. And you'll see from that, just remember to keep that press down. And we're just going to follow it all the way around like so. And hopefully when it's removed, we'll get a nice little border. Okay, we get the general idea for that. I'll quickly just draw around this and then when we come back, we'll be ready got the back piece out. Right, there's all our little surround done now. So hopefully that should be identical shape to the one we've cut out previously. So we'll quickly cut this out now on a scroll saw and then we'll be ready 
to peel our little bit of tape off this remember you've got to be fragile so we have all this tape to pull off then on the back side there just a little bit of sandpaper just get rid of those little rough areas there's small files you can purchase but we've got to be a bit delicate especially around here and i've noticed on the back of this one the chunks come out there i don't know if you can see that you're going to focus there's a piece missing there so we'll have to watch that we can put a bit of filler in there look enough that's going to be on the back back section and not on the front of the piece so let's cut this out first and then we'll look into the tidying up and what we're going to put on the back of there right there's our little backer all nicely cut out so we've basically got the same shape as what we got for our initial template so next stage for me is just a little sanding down you will find on the back of your pieces little nodules take seconds like that just to sand it all down smoothly and the same on this one and obviously we've got to be a little bit delicate with this i tend to use sandpaper there are small files out there, if you prefer to use a file, something like that. I've tried them once, they're just not for me, but everybody to their own. I've even heard of people burning these off gently, that's definitely not for me. So we'll just find a nice flat surface and just take our time and go gentle. We've got to this stage now, the last thing we want to do is start breaking things off. And if you remember that section we had up there that had the hole in, We've literally filled that in with a bit of wood filler and that's all nicely filled in now look for all your gaps think of your resin the smallest of gaps it will find a way to leak through so quick tidy down then we remove all this tape off here before we decide with the paint and the stain for the backer and if you remember those little floaters we were talking about there's literally just two in his feet and one at the side of the mouth there personally you could leave those off but since we've done it we've made them and there's our little floater there that were painted black the same and then we will stick that in there like so and there's another little floater there look a little one we will stick that into the other shoe like so and there's a little one there to go up toward the face so there's just little details that you're might need just to finish the project or you could literally just leave them out it's entirely up to you but we'll pop them in today since we've already cut them out okay general tidy up and then we'll use wood stain i'm gonna put some wood stain on the back of itself just to stain that down slightly give it a bit more coloration and we're going to literally pull this tape off so it'll end up looking like that and then to make it nice we're going to put some black spray on there just cheap black spray nothing fantastic and then we'll stick it all down and then spray some nice varnish over the top if i can find some somewhere we'll spray varnish over the top itself just before the resin starts going in we'll show you towards the resin side towards the end but for now we'll incorporate all this and then we're definitely onto the resin side of things you can see from that we've used our wood dye just a light teak to finish that with and we've sprayed black paint normally I use a brush but so many small little sections to get into we also want those side walls doing it was just easier just to hang it from the washing line outside and spray some black spray on there 
they are obviously both nicely dry now so i've literally sprayed them both with a gloss varnish a couple of reasons for that one just gives it more of an extra shine to the finished project plus it will seal that seal any of that wood up that ply and also inside those side walls here just so when you put your resin in or if you were going to paint this it wouldn't bleed into the side sections so we just seal it with wood sealers varnish personally i think that bit of paint was sprayed on there would have sealed it just as easy but to be safe we sprayed it all with some nice just cheap cheap varnish nothing fantastic and that's it for regards to the shed it's just down to resin now remember we have sprayed it all with the varnish to finish so there's nothing else to do apart from we were sticking that to the backer section like so now for me i'm just literally just going to get resin we'll mix some resin up and we'll brush it onto the back of here obviously you could paint all that with resin first and then stick that on but i just want to keep it away off the side bits so a slower process for me is literally just to brush your resin all over and you've got to make sure you get it all because any little bits that you've missed you will guarantee that resin will find it and leak through to your next color so we'll go and find some resin literally brush it onto that and then we'll stick that down on there like so get some little pegs on it to hold it in place and then we'll come back the next day and basically start filling this one in right let's go and find some resin okay it's resin time the resin for today is vista one two part resin a your resin and b your ardner and it's what they call a one-to-one -one mix so whatever we use of a we use exactly the same of b and in this case just mixing the two together and we'll be good to go i use these little cheap party cups they come in packets of 100 plus they're ideal because they've got little markers on the side little grooves i'll just count up for today which is going to be far too much for this one but i've got, I've got little side projects going of A, the resin, and basically four little markers of B, Adna, and then we will mix the two together and use it as a glue to start off with, just to set this into the backer like so. When we come to put the colour in with acrylic paint, it will be exactly the same procedure, but obviously we're going to be adding the acrylic. So for now, the resin is just going to be a glue, just to hold the framework down onto the actual backing piece. So I'll just mix a bit of this up, a little bit in there of A and B. And then when we come back, we'll start attempting to glue this down. Right, it's the next day, and it looks like that's all nicely secure. Everything's set solid. I did re forget about our little floaters here. So I noticed them to one side and one up here. So I literally just glued those down with a bit of super glue just to finish it off. Like I said previously, you could have got away with leaving them out, to be honest. Nobody would be any the wiser. So that's all nicely secure. So all we've got to do now is basically just start filling it all in with our resins. I've Googled certain images and the colour color variations do go from bright red to darker red to brownish to lighter brown. So I'm basically just going to use what acrylic paints I've got available to me. So there's a bit of yellow there for the belt, brown and his shoes. And then we'll mix a couple together to make a bit of skin tone. There is different things out there. You can get inks, dyes, powders. I tend to use just acrylic paints in my in my uh, little project and I've, I've had no issues so far. So it'll be exactly the same as before. A and B into your two little containers 
we mix uh, we've got four again mix it one amount and then I'll transfer into separate nice new ones and hopefully we'll get it all out of the one mix like some of the buckle which is simply just two little yellow dots here I'll even mix it in the end of a spoon put a bit of yellow in there and then we we'll use cocktail stick and we can just drop a bit in there nicely and also use it to help it to get into these tighter areas okay let's mix our resin up start dropping some color in and we can start filling this one in Right, that's all nicely filled in. No problem, we've had no leakage, which is always a good sign. As you go along with your resin, I just get a little lighter like so, or one of these bigger versions, and just skim across your resin as you put it in. And that just helps all those little bubbles come to the po uh, top and hopefully disappear. And that's it, that's all we can do for now. So we'll leave this a good 24 hours, 48 hours, and when we come back, hopefully this little project will be finished. Get a nice cover for it, put it to one side, put a tray over the top, because any dust flies, they'll find it, no for sure. So we'll come back in 48 hours and see what we've got. Right, that's it. This little project is finished. It's literally been 24 hours later. I would leave this for another couple of days just to make sure it is nice and solid. But you can see from that, we've had no leakages. It's all solid enough for me. And those little floaters there, they stand up nicely on the shoes, boots, and the little one there up in his face. So that's it. This little project is finished. Just nice, nice, fun projects. I'd rather a router this out, would have been a lot easier for me. But scroll saw, router, just give it a go and just enjoy what you're doing, basically. So it was cut out on 3mm recycled plywood for the main frame. And we stuck it to a 5.5mm plywood backer using resin as the glue. Before that, we sprayed black on all the surround and put a bit of varnish on both pieces just to seal it all and give it a little bit of shine and then we used our resin with cheap acrylic paints mixed in and basically just filled each section as you can see it now we'll put a little hook on this for hanging purposes or you could make a nice little base and have him stood there with some kind of wording underneath but for me and this little video this little project is finished and he measures in at 11 inches by 6 inches across. And we use a Pegasus number 5 spiral blade to cut it all out with. Give it a go. Just enjoy yourselves and have fun. Thank you very much for watching.